Yep. All right. And I see by the clock on the wall that it is, in fact, 12.15. And we want to be known as the on-time organization. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jenny Heyman. I'm a program manager at eCampus Ontario. Um, and very pleased to welcome uh, and introduce my colleagues, Joanne Kehoe and Terry Green, for today's EdTech Tool Time. <laughs> I look very much look forward to hearing what they have to say. So take it away, Ter Joanne and Terry. Thank you, Jenny, very much. And Terry and I are in the same room, so we're going to probably we could do some sight gags, but we didn't set that up. So we might do it. Um, so thanks, everyone, for coming. And I'm just I'm Joanne, and I work as a long term manager at eCampus Ontario and normally found at McMaster University as an instructional designer with the educational technology team, so lots of ed tech tools. So I'll be talking about one tool today and Terry will be talking about another. We weren't really sure whether we wanted to just talk about use of ed tech tools more generally, but we thought maybe it'd be more beneficial to talk, each talk about a specific tool. So um, at the end of this or during any time actually during webinar, if you have a tool that you have, are looking to explore that we maybe would want to talk about at another time on another web, uh, mental box, please put it in the chat window. And Terry? Introduce yourself. Yep. Hi, everybody. My name is Terry Green. I am uh, also a program manager here at eCampus Ontario and uh, normally a learning technology specialist at Fleming College, just like Alana. You can see right, I don't know if you, she's right below you, <laughs> below me on yours, but um, anyway, that's what I normally do. Um, so today, Joanne is going to cover uh, cutting edge technology, and I'm going to do a trailing edge technology, a little bit of a uh, something that's been around for a while, but maybe a, a use you haven't thought about yet. Um, so yeah, Joanne, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, so my first question for you is, we're gonna interview each other, just so you know. Um, uh, what's your tool? Well, my tool, Terry, is uh, we thought we'd split up uh, the tools, one being more a content creation tool, which is what I, I'm gonna talk about, and Terry's going to be talking about more a collaborative tool, so activity-based, but they both can be both, depending on how you use them. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to talk about H5P. I don't know if anyone has heard about H5P. If you have, either say yes or, oh, love it, Jessica, yay. Well, maybe you can answer questions <laughs> if I can't answer them. Um, so I'm going to, what I'm going to do first is share the screen to show you what the tool is. Not here, but interested, great. There's a bit of echo, eh, Alana? Okay, that's probably because we're in the same room. Or maybe, oh, are, are there, everyone has their microphones. Is everyone muted is what I'm wondering. And I think you all are, so it must be us, sorry. I will mute while you talk. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen and just give you a little bit of a spiel on what H5P is. So here's the H5P homepage, which is h5p.org. I don't know if anyone wants to put that in the chat window, Jenny or Terry. Um, so it's basically an online content creation tool, HTML5, uh, for creating interactive content. So the good thing about it being HTML5, it's compatible with a you know, whole range of devices and browsers. Um, very responsive and uh, it is interactive, which is great. And it also the best part I think is it's free and it's fairly simple to use. Um, I think the, the modes of use using H5P in a course run now from using directly as a plugin in WordPress, Moodle or Drupal, but you can also embed it into a website or in a, into an LMS. So it's pretty flexible that way. Um, I first found out about it from working with Julia Forsyth on the Ontario Extend program with when Mal Rad was there from her group. And what basically we were kind of looking at how to develop content in our WordPress site that would be interactive for people who are coming to it. So that's in, in one of the, I'll show you the one of the modules from the Ontario Extend program, which is OntarioExtend.ca. So under the technologist module, I just experimented with using H5P in one of the activities. So here's what one of the content types of H5P looks like. Looks like. This is actually called a documentation tool. So H5P itself has, I think, 25 plus 
types of content. So if you go to their examples and downloads tab, you can see, you know, there's how you can create the content with plugins or you can create it directly on H5P and embed it. So here's the three featured ones and there's all the content types. So they're adding to it all the time. Some are more complex than others. Um, so what I've done is kind of experimented with each of them. Some of them are pretty simple and straightforward, but some I think would really add some richness to online course content. Now let me see. I had, did create a web page in WordPress and I will pop it in the chat window. Let's see if I can find the chat window. Maybe you can pop it in there, do you mind? Chat, oh there it is, I got it. It disappeared on me. So there you are. So I don't know if everyone wants to maybe take a boo at this page. What I did was kind of test drive some of it. So there's my next question from you, Terry. <laughs> Jumping ahead of it. Yeah, so you've, you've shown us some examples. Do you have more examples or yeah, are, you, yeah. are you ready for the next question? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you know what else? I'll show, what we can do is maybe if everyone wants to just take a boo at that link, you can kind of go through the examples as I'm showing them. Um, so if you can bring that up, I know it's kind of hard when you're doing it in a webinar and you have the website open, a web page open and you're trying to do things, but um, maybe we can just go through. So here's some of the more simple examples of H5P. So the first one is multiple choice, pretty simple. And I, there's a, uh, it's a pumpkin spice flavored theme to these. I'm sure everyone's really thrilled with that. Either you love it or you hate it. But um, so there's the first content type, multiple choice. Pretty easy. Really, um, when you are creating it on the H5P site, they guide you through it. And they have a tutorial. Um, you, can go, right. you, can, you can provide feedback for each incorrect and correct attempt. So pretty easy. So everyone got the right answer. Have you tried this out? The correct original name for Starbucks pumpkin spice is the fall harvest latte. Yeah, pretty boring. So a bit more complex. So one of the other content types that I think would be pretty usable for most of us here is the course presentation. So this is when you can take a slide kind of format and make a presentation. I, like I said in, the, in my uh, feedback on the use of this tool, you, I wish you could upload an existing PowerPoint, but you actually have to create it from scratch on the H5P site, which it's pretty easy. And if you have an existing PowerPoint, you can just kind of copy stuff over. Um, the, if you want to go through, you can actually hit the little corner uh, full screen button in the bottom right corner of the course presentation. I'll do that now. And so you can go through. There's some content some more content, and then there's a question. You can embed all kinds of different interactions, multiple choice, fill in the blanks, drag and drop, uh, hotspot. I tried a few of them out. And the correct answer for that, check your answer. There's fill in the missing words. So if you read the content on slide two, you know the answers are Vancouver and Washington. That's where pumpkin spice lattes were first Test it out and now that's all over the globe. And then you can also embed video. So here's a little YouTube clip that you can embed right in. And the interesting part about the video is you can also put interactive content in the video. So I didn't do that for this example, but there is that another one of the content types is interactive video. So and there, there is another option of embedding a Twitter feed. So here I put the pumpkin spice latte Twitter feed on one of the slides. So that constantly refreshes, as you can see. So that's kind of a cool way of getting, not only do you have, you're creating interactive content, but you have you know, current content incorporated in one of the slides that you don't have to actually have to update yourself. I'm gonna exit out of this. And I'll go down to the next one. So find the hotspot. This is, image is actually courtesy of my colleague, Peggy French, who was at, uh, what is that store called? Trader Joe's in the States. And took this picture of their pumpkin spice displays. So this is a little game where you just kind of click on one of the squares, which square has the pumpkin spice pancake mix. I mean, these are pretty simple examples of H5P, but you can see where you can get a little bit more complicated with course content. So here. Let me try again. It's actually in here. It's kind of fun. 
I found that one pretty easy too. And the interactive video, which I think would be pretty useful for online courses. You know, there is normally a lot of video, whether it's a video that is a screencast that the instructor has created and you want to break that up with questions or it's a video that is an open education resource video. So here's the one from YouTube that I got from Open Culture. I'll play it, hopefully, I don't know how this will work for volume. It's gonna be weird, but yeah. I'll play it, actually I'll unplug my microphone for a minute so you can hear it through my feed. Do you wanna mute maybe, are you muted? I'm muted. Okay. So here we are with the YouTube video. I'll put it in large screen. These are, oh, sorry, I should give it a little intro to what this is. So these are coffee commercials from, I think, the late 50s, and Jim Henson worked on them, and they're pretty hilarious when you watch them. Like, they would never be on TV today, basically. Oh. <laughs> so. Okay, buddy, what do you think of Wilkins coffee? I never tasted it. <laughs> now, what do you think of Wilkins? So we stop and with a little question. Jim Henson was the one who worked on those for coffee commercials. There you go. Care for a cup of Wilkins coffee? No, I don't like coffee. <laughs> this has been a public service. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty, pretty funny. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you can see where this would be a really good We're here to persuade sorry. people to drink more Wilkins coffee. What's the club for? <laughs> To get their attention. So these are Wilkins coffee commercials. So you, it could be used to just check understanding of content that is included in the video, or it could be maybe a way of students to maybe students would create the videos and share them with the peers. You get on the Wilkins coffee bandwagon? Whatever. Oh, you either go with Wilkins oh, or you I don't, don't I'm not know. Super familiar with Nearpod, but maybe we can check it out after. Does anybody? Whoa. That's what happens. <laughs> so I, I'll just show one more interaction that you can put in on a video. Would you like to skip ahead? So you can skip ahead at, to a certain time period on, on the video. So we're going to say yeah. This machine will make you want a cup of Wilkins coffee. So lots of really neat interactions that you can put into a video, which I found pretty interesting. So yeah, kind of jumping around a bit. Do you have a question for me, Angie? Yeah. What? Okay. What technical skill do we need if we're just starting with this? I think it's pretty easy, especially the simple formats, like the multiple choice, the fill in the blanks, the drag and drop. Um, it's, they take you through, let's go through, say, the fill in the blanks for a sec. We have time. So here we are here. Oh, there's an example. Let me just actually show you on one thing about if you're using it in a WordPress or a Drupal or Moodle page, you would have to have experience with downloading a plugin and using that. So I'll show you the example here on my WordPress page when I downloaded the H5P plugin, it has it over in the dashboard area. So when you want to add new, you just click on it. I'll show super quickly because I know we don't kind of close in close to 1230. So you can select your content type. Uh, say multiple choice. Select use. They have the tutorial right there if you get stuck. Put your questions in, put your, your options, click correct. And then after you're finished, you save it. And then it's really easy to add into your posts, your WordPress posts. You actually get a, I'll go over here. So if I go into my H5P post, you can see add H5P it was right there. So it's pretty easy to insert. And similar with the, with the actual embed code, I'll show you a page from someone else. So let's see. So here's, uh, page Ryan uh, Ryerbanta.com. He he used H5P for presentation, so you can get the embed code, embed code right there. Just click on it, copy the embed code over, plunk it in your LMS. As in the if you're using like a D2L for example, you'd use insert stuff and and it would appear. But I'm sure every other I don't know all other LMSs very well, but 
think they all have kind of that same flexibility of embedding content. You have a question from Jenny. How does it do with accessibility and inclusive design? Oh, very good question. H5P is making a lot of strides towards this. And I know that not, while, where not all the content types are accessible, um, most of the ones that are most frequently used are. And they actually have, I mean, they have a mandate to become fully WCAG 2.0 accessible. And it's a big deal to them. So they are actually hosting hackathons with H5P users to make all of their content types accessible. So they're working very hard on it. And one more quick question. How does it fit into open education? Yes, good question, Terry. So I think that's one of the really exciting things about H5P is that it can be used as, say, a wrapper for open educational resources. Um, so let's try to get here. It's only windows open here. So for example, say our colleagues at Brock have developed this wonderful open educational resources as a result of funding from eCampus Ontario. So it's on, in it, diversities in vocal training. So here you have a video that's CC BY that you can upload and create an interactive video with. They have some questions that they've already developed. You could, you could incorporate those questions into one of their content types, either through um, the video, the interactive video content type, or the one that I showed earlier, which was the document tool. So say you had the video there, then you had the question that they developed, and then you have students responding in here. And then when they're finished, sorry, bad typing, when they've gone through the whole series, they can then export it as a, an assignment, a PDF file to then upload to Dropbox or email to instructors, whatever. So I really think that there's a lot of use with kind of compiling open education resources together. And by and, and then adding you know relevant interactivity depending on what course that you're teaching or what the the curriculum is that you want to get across. So that's kind of H five P in a nutshell. I know we're at twelve thirty two. I don't want to go into your time, Terry. But okay. just just to just to kind of close off the H five P type. If anyone wants any kind of one on one, we have our small groups. So I can say that <laughs> who's here today that wants to go through some of that with me, I'd be happy to help you develop some some material. And just quickly, what are some of the other tools like this? Yes, okay, so we have um, what I consider, I, that's what I like about H5P, it's kind of unique, it's, it's pretty new. Um, similar content creator tools are the pricey, expensive, hard to learn types like Articulate Storyline, Adobe Captivate. Um, there are other ones that I'm not super familiar with, like Nearpod I'm not familiar with, so I would I'm not check sure. that out. Um, but just to let you know, I'm gonna, post this link in here just recently I think it was this week where is it I got it somewhere Jane Hart did her annual I can't find the link oh here it is she uh, I don't know if you all are familiar with Jane Hart's to, edu, ed tech tools which oh darn I just lost there it is which she releases every fall so there's a whole bunch of similar tools in here that are categorized so I'll pop that link in the chat window you can check it out. So she has lots of different, and, the, and H5P is actually one of them. So. so Terry, are you ready to talk about your tool now? I am. I will stop sharing. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with a trailing edge technology, and I I searched when this came out to make sure it's old enough to call it that. And it's Google Slides, a Google, one of the Google Drive tools. And it's been five years now, so I think we can call it old. And that this is a, a trailing edge technology. <laughs> but I wanna focus on one really simple use of Google Slides. Um, I think everyone kind of knows it's the PowerPoint of Google. Um, but, uh, and forever, I, when everyone asked me why you would use Google, Google Slides over PowerPoint, and I was kind of like, I, I don't know. But uh, last spring at Advancing Learning, I watched Dina Mowati at, uh, from Sheridan give a little talk, and she, she suggested, and let me share the, my screen. Which one, which one? That one. That, that if, if you, you were, were to, to share the can, can comment, comment link, link to your, your students, students while, while you're, you're presenting, presenting. It, 
it creates this interactive, annotative, collaborative um, experience. And that could be whether or not you're, even if you're like running a live online session like this, something like this, or if it's in class, students on their devices could um, add a comment like, oh, sorry. There we go, sorry. So if you, you when you share, you give the can comment link and you send that out to your students. Um, and I did it a little differently so you could actually do it right now. I also went to bit.ly to shorten it. So if you were to type bit.ly slash GS Google Slides practice, you'll come into this once right now and you could comment. So for example, I added a, can you see it? Yeah, I added a pre-comment. What's the deal with this picture? Because this is from, I'm teaching uh, conspiracy theories at Fleming this semester. So, and we were doing a mid midterm question generator activity. So I just got a picture of a generator in the back. So now I could, yeah, there we have a comment already from Jessica O'Reilly, thanks. So as you are presenting your slides, you could um, like monitor, just like we're doing in the Zoom here, the, the questions, and you could come back later as well after the class. Um, just share out the link to itself on the slides. So that's kind of the the, the gist of, of why I think this is a, now, I know you can do this probably with Office 365 in, in PowerPoint now, I'm not sure, but um, this is more readily available to everyone. I have a new comment, new chat question. Can I comment on iPad? I can comment on iPads in general. They are tablets <laughs> <laughs> from Apple. I don't, I'm, I don't see why not. Do you know? Yeah, we could test it. Joanne will test it and get back to you. <laughs> yeah, what, have I skipped over everything? So why, what, when you're encouraging faculty to use Google Slides, why would you encourage them to use Google Slides over PowerPoint? I mean, it's commenting, but is there anything else that? Um, also, it could be collaborative in developing them. Say maybe you're in team teaching, um, so you can work on them together or share them together and see each other's, um, and they can evolve that way. Or even if in your, um, when, you're, when you're having your class, you might share that link out to comment or even edit. So maybe you leave an open space on a slide itself for examples of a concept, like in conspiracy theories, you're talking about projection and stuff like that. So maybe leave a space on a slide wide open for students to come in and add their examples of what projection is, um, which is, um, I think makes it much more interactive and um, something that will be more, um, less disposable, something that they can have going on. Um, yeah, and can students, you can always see what student commented if you're assessing, Exactly, correct? yeah. But if a student's commenting directly on a slide, can you also see revisions to that? So you can see who's contributed? Yeah, you would, you would come back and maybe students can, oh, sorry, say the question again? I guess I'm just wondering how, as an instructor, if you're using Google Slides as an assessed activity, oh, they would have, you can see the activity by their Google login name, but in the comments, but I'm just wondering, is that, have you used that in? Not, not in any way to count for any marks or anything, just in um, formative assessment to clear up misconceptions and, and maybe students would even help each other to clear up misconceptions as the comments come up. Um, we have another question. So it's the live collaboration and student as co-creator model. Yes, that's exactly what it is, Jenny. Thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> we love students as co-creators. And that's one thing I liked about H5P. Sorry, I didn't want to go back to that, but just no that you can have students build content by using that. It's really easy to use. So students can use it. Same with Google Slides. It's an easy thing to get students to create content. Yeah. And, and you model it that way, and then maybe they in a, using use it as well in their group group projects, and, and, and it allows them to collaborate more easily. Yeah. So I'm wondering if you want to ask me this specific question. <laughs> 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 
at this. I've got so many screens open. My question screen is, okay, here it is. Uh, if, if I'm sold on making a switch from PowerPoint to Google Slides, what steps can I take? I would say just try it once. Take a PowerPoint deck you already have, move it into Google Drive, and um, revise it from there. And, and tr just try to, to give a small, if you lecture or whatever, a, a class where you provide them with the link, have them come in, make sure they know how to get in, and practice commenting, and, and see if, if that engages the students. Yeah, that's, I just tried it. I see Peggy made a comment about you know, forcing the login for students, which might be problematic. So I guess you'd have to get that agreement front up that everyone's okay. Yeah, or, or, or not require them to do it. Yeah, you, then you can't track. yeah. yeah I wouldn't, I, I'm not suggesting you using this to, to do any assessment, but just to add some, some life to, to the, the interaction in your class. Yeah. And if there's any problems with how you feel about this idea, um, remember it was Dina Moati at Sheridan <laughs> who suggested this. I was, I was just going to ask too about the accessibility issue. Do you have any tips around accessibility? Well, I googled that, and there was a great. Um, I have the link. I'll put the link in the chat here. Oh, there it is, right there. There's some pretty good tips. Include alt text. Use tables for data. Use comments. Check for high color contrast. Oh, great tips there. It's good because, you know, so similar with H5P, when you add an image, they force you to, cre to create the alt tag and also fill out copyright yeah. information. So it's, it's not only good practice, but it gets you familiar with that practice. So you start to do it regularly, even outside of that tool. Exactly. Yeah. So we only have a couple minutes left. So I wanted to just provide a bonus and just in case you're used to Google Slides and this was a waste of your time. I have one more extra tool here and it's right there, it's hiding. This is called alternative2.net and it's basically, I don't like Google Slides. I want to use something else. Oh no, that was a dumb idea to put that there. So I put in slides. Or PowerPoint and it gives you a list of all the options so if if you just kind of like oh does is there an, an Apple version of this or is there that this is a great way you could pop h5p in we could try that and just see if there's something else out there if you're just not quite liking what what it is it says Prezi for both. <laughs> or maybe, no, it hasn't loaded yet. There we go. Hi, ha, how? What, I don't know that one. Oh, that's the only one on Earth. That's like H5P. But anyway, if it's just an idea, you can pop, uh, pop your tool in there and you might get some more ideas. Or that's just get sent cool. down a rabbit hole. I did not know that existed, so that's interesting. I know there is another similar tool to H5P called Adapt, which is has a pricing structure. So that's why I didn't like it. Okay. <laughs> but it's, and it's a little bit more complicated. Yeah. Um, we, we are closing in on one minute, and we did want to leave you time to ask questions. So I know we don't have a lot of time, but... Yeah, so only half a question. Half a question is good. Um, or if there's another tool that you've used that you think, hey, you guys should talk about this next time or everyone should know about this tool we can you can type it in the chat window and we'll somehow collect them and share them out uncomfortable silences are okay <laughs> that's okay yeah. oh excellent selections thank you thank you jessica I mean, it's hard to, uh, I know sometimes working with a tool can be frustrating. So we are here to help. And there's lots of really good tutorials and online forums for, for H5P. I know I'm sure there's Google Slides, oh, yeah. probably a billion. But we should you learn something new, yay. We should provide uh, contact information for Dina if you have any questions about Google Slides. <laughs> yes, and I will, Julia Forsythe will introduce yeah. me to H5P. There we go. Those, those, those,
Thank you. Thanks. Can't wait to thanks try. for coming, everybody. And thanks, everyone. We'll see. Oh, our next bento box, just a little plug, is coming up on October 18th, and we'll be coming to you live from the ICDE conference in Toronto. Um, it's Wednesday. Yes. Uh, October 18th from 12.15 to 12.45, so that's a Wednesday. Yep, there's Jenny put in the info. Great. Thanks for coming, Thanks, everybody. Everyone. Bye, have a good day.